Welcome, welcome, friends, and and welcome, Henry Thoreau. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, Joe. I'm kind of confused. There's like a lot of technology here. I don't know what that's all about. Um, yeah. So you're on like a podcast right now, and this technology is so we can make our show. Yeah, we definitely don't have that stuff in the wild. So can you tell me about that? I've heard that you were unable to keep a job as a school teacher. Yeah, kids. So、um, in science, there's something called a periodic table. I'll be teaching that this semester. There's iron and calcium.、Um, so please take out your daily oral language pack. <gasps> you suck. You are uninterested in continuing your family's business. I don't think I have the mental stability to keep this going. I mean. I like living in the basement. I don't really have the willpower to do it. I can't believe you'd say that to me, man. Hey, it's our homes. Get out of here, man. And you were denied by the woman you wanted to marry, Jamie. Can you pull that up? <gasps> no. Okay, one. How did you get that footage? And two, didn't you just ask me to tell you about it? Anyway, yeah.、Um, so I was pretty down on my luck, as you apparently know, and I was really struggling to find myself. I felt lost. I, I felt lost, man. I really needed to go find myself. So you went out. Yeah, man. I had to search. I went out to Walden Pond in Massachusetts, and I lived, man. Have you ever tried elk meat? No, I don't think so. There wasn't a lot of that up at Walden Pond. Oh, it's it's great, man. You need to get some. It's so good for you. When I started eating it, I noticed a huge gain in my jujitsu. Okay, I might need to look into that. Yeah, man. I'll get you in contact with my friend down in Utah. You, we can get you a custom crossbow. It'll be great. Anyway,、uh, why did you decide to leave humanity? I decided to leave for a few reasons. After I failed to live a normal life or conform to society, as you could say, I decided it was time for me to flip the script. I believe that everyone should not conform to society, as my compatriot said that. Whoa, 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 compatriot! <laughs> That's a pretty big word. So I'm a hippie, not an idiot. I went to Harvard, as I was saying. My friend Ralph Emerson wrote in his essay, "Self-reliance," and I'll direct quote him from here. There's a time in every man's education where he arrives at the conviction that envy is ignorance, that imitation is suicide. Then he goes on to explain it that you don't take life by the reins, that if you don't become self-reliant, you be. Oh, I see what he did there. That's like basically the title of the essay. Yes, that's true. Good job. Ha <laughs> ha! Wow. So anyway, if you don't become self-reliant, you're committing these crimes against yourself that are akin to suicide. Maybe we don't need to go into the woods for two years to realize this. I mean, that's why I wrote about it. But we need to become more self-reliant. I mean, we have DoorDash for Christ's sake. I'm not saying we need to go out and hunt our own food, but come on, just push a few buttons, and the only work you need to do is open the door and not look embarrassing to the driver. Wow, that's crazy! It's honestly like MMA. How is that even remote? Yeah. So another thing I found out is that you really need to simplify your life. When I was out there, it was just me. I didn't need an iPhone. I didn't need anything else. It was just me, my thoughts, and nature. Yeah, I can like I can totally see that. I just don't think I could simplify when it comes to like elk meat or something. Have you ever tried it? We're just chimpanzees, man, floating on this rock in space, man. Exactly, man, and that's why my book available at BarnesandNoble.com, where if you use code Thorough fifteen, you can get fifteen percent off in your first purchase. That's code Thorough fifteen at checkout. Okay, so let's talk about your writing, since you're known for balling out in that regard. Right. So in my writing, I really wanted to show the importance of free individual expression. I basically call everyone nowadays stupid, but I tell them even if you are an idiot, be the best idiot you can be. Wow, 
That's crazy. And you figured all this out just by sitting at a lake? I mean, I've been out in nature before, hunting elk out in Utah. You've ever gone? Anyway, yeah, being out in nature, man. It's so healing, man. That's what I've been saying. I've always tried to stress the idea of the beauty of nature. Just being out there, man, is beautiful. Let's bring back the topic of your compa- Your com- com- Your friend, Emerson. What part of his writing just speaks with you? Yeah, well, I met Ralph at Harvard. We really just hit it off. We totally had different lives, but I still respected him. He's the smartest person I know. And to answer your question, Joe, I'd have to say his topic of goodness on humanity and his respect for all human beings. He brings up the topic of being misunderstood. He says that it isn't too bad to be misunderstood. He brought up people like Pythagoras and Socrates and even Jesus. So you went out for what, like three weeks? Two years. And now you're back. What's that about? I, um, had a thing to get- You're kind of being hypocritical here. No, I, I won't say that. I have a door dash here for, uh, Henry Thoreau. Gotta go! <laughs> well, that's it for this episode with Henry David Thoreau. This episode was sponsored by nobody, because who would want to sponsor an episode about a dead hippie writer? Till next time. I've been Joe, and this is the Joe Rogan Experience. Jamie, get me some Coca-Cola. I need to leave this place. I just spit all over my screen. <laughs> Ew.